You may have heard or seen a name floating around recently called Boogie2988, his real name being Steven Jason Williams. And you may have heard that name because of the recent controversies that he's been in relating to crypto scams. I will get into that topic later on in the video. I want to start where his career started. He began on YouTube on April 5th, 2006. This was two years before I was even born. And his most popular videos are skits. He usually posts vlogs on his YouTube channel as well as those skits, but his YouTube channel is mainly for vlogs. And then he later in his career started streaming on Twitch, which is uh, probably where his downfall started to begin. He got a popularity boost when Ray William Johnson made a video about him. Looking at his older content, he posted a lot of vlogs and skits like I stated before, and even now he's still making vlogs, but the skits are nowhere to be found. The skits got sent to the Shadow Realm, I haven't seen a single skit on his like newer videos. Now his videos consist of vlogs, which are mainly him talking about you know what he's doing in his life, or just complaining. During his entire career, he's been in a lot of controversies. Even now, he's still being brought up in controversies like that crypto scam. The controversies he's in now is just sad and depressing. One of his earlier controversies is when he started streaming on Twitch. And when he made YouTube videos, he had this persona that he made named like Francis. And um, he'd like spread positivity and uh, people liked him. They thought of him like as a legend, like as a as a person to kind of look up to. During one of his streams, Boogie2988 started talking about the Holocaust and he said that there was some good that came out of it. Some good came from all of that. You, you can't make this up. He actually said that. But he said that the good that came out of the Holocaust were the medical advancements. Brother, these guys tortured people to get those medical advancements. And let's say, even if they did make medical advancements out of that tragic event, how is that a good thing? Those medical advancements are just going to be used more to torture more people. He responded to that by saying, oh, you know, I should have said that one of my teachers said that some good came out of it. Which teacher is saying that some good came out of the Holocaust? I don't think any teacher would ever say that. He's been in a bunch of more controversies after that, a lot of them revolving around romantic interests. I'm not really gonna get into that, but it's just a bunch of like, he said, she said kind of stuff, so I don't wanna really get into that. A lot of his reputation started to dissipate when he started his streaming career. Like I said before, his videos would show one side of him and his streaming would show another side of him, with his streaming side being his real side. And he even stated this on stream before. He said that making these videos on YouTube is someone who he wanted to be. If that's someone that you wanna be, I mean, I think that's good. Trying to want, want to be that character, Francis, because Francis is seen as as like a like a good and positive character because there's been some videos of him playing that character, you know, spreading positive messages while his streaming side is just saying them like the most darkest jokes ever and being extremely pessimistic about everything and just being a nihilist. Like, bro, that's just depressing. He also begged a lot of money. So he just started e-begging. Since he doesn't know how to manage money and after he got divorced, he had no idea how to spend his money financially. So he would start begging people for money because he would, he would spend that money on like cards or hookers or something like that. I mean, he did, he did. He spent it on both of those things. There was another controversy that happened like, I think almost a year ago, a person named Frank had been stalking Boogie for months and he eventually confronted Boogie at his front door. And like stalking in general, isn't cool. I mean, like, that's creepy. Like, that's really creepy. He went to Boogie's front door. Boogie then told him to leave. And then Frank didn't leave. So then Boogie pulled out a gun because he wouldn't leave. And then he fired a warning shot into the sky. It's not good on both of their part. I mean, like, one, you got a stalker and you have someone who doesn't know how to handle guns. They're both in the wrong for that. I mean, it's, that's just incredibly stupid to do on both of their parts. I mean, that warning shot could have hurt someone. People die from getting hit by stray bullets. And I mean, like, he shot up into the sky. So that bullet could have landed anywhere and could have killed someone. His reputation, however, started to take a nosedive when a documentary was made about him about eight months ago. A YouTuber named Mike Klum made a documentary on Boogie2988 and documented about his dark and mysterious side. The whole video in general 
is just incredibly depressing and just sad to watch. I don't, I don't recommend you watch this if you're like already sad, like maybe watch it when you're like in a jolly mood so you don't like drive your car off of a cliff because this is, this is depressing. Boogie is constantly beating down on himself throughout the entire documentary. He's beating down on himself, talking down on himself and everything. Like this is, this is, this is bad. I watched the entirety of the documentary. It's almost an hour long, but I highly recommend you watch it. It is a good documentary, but it's just, it's actually so incredibly depressing and sad to watch. But I will give you the key notes on it. The link of the documentary will be in the description if you do want to watch it. Again, I highly recommend you do. For nine months, Mike had access into like his contacts, his personal contacts, uh, his daily schedule, and uh, his finances to like see what kind of stuff he's been spending on, uh, see what he's been doing day to day for the next nine months. It talks about how Boogie, in the first part of the documentary, it talks about how Boogie is doing extremely poorly financially. Boogie even stated that he doesn't know how to uh, financially use his money constantly bashing on himself and and what i said about him not knowing how to spend his money financially he even stated that he spent a bunch of his money on hookers and cryptocurrency that is an interesting statement like i stated for the millionth time he's incredibly self-destructive and uh, he keeps constantly bashing on himself so i mean i wouldn't be surprised if he came out as a masochist i, I was losing brain cells during the entire video listening to Boogie, constantly victimizing himself as well, and talking about his spending habits. His spending habits make my hairline curl back. It is, it is that bad. Hearing him talk about how much money he spends on sex workers is more painful than watching an entire season of Skibbity Toilet. It is bad. He also makes a lot of dark jokes while streaming as well. I can't list them all here, but just know that they're really, really bad. And I'm saying this now because he said it himself in the documentary that the darker a joke is, the more important it is to make that joke. I think the darker something is, cancer, rape, murder, child, the darker it is, the more important it is to make jokes about it. What the f he took that to heart because if you see some of the stuff that he, that he says on stream, it is deplorable. And he also said that the N-word is just a word with no real meaning behind it. The N-word is just a word. The mood was so depressing for Mike that he had to end up taking a break from filming the documentary because of how just depressing it is. That is, oh, that is awful. It's so sad to like see someone fall from grace this badly. I mean, like he went from spreading positivity to becoming a depressing manipulator. That's pretty much what the documentary is about. It's about just how depressing Boogie is, but it's a good documentary. It's really well made. So what is Boogie2988 up to now? Crypto scams. Boogie has spent so much of his money on crypto that it's no surprise that Boogie would want to make that money back by promoting a crypto scam. Boogie made a video impersonating Andrew Tate talking about the matrix and uh, oh, you can only escape the matrix if you buy my crypto coin. He made a video on talking about this coin, but he ended up deleting the video because of all the backlash he got, but there has been a bunch of reposts on that same video. At the end of the video he made, he had a link to his meme coin webpage that's called fattyuniversity.com. That is, that's an interesting title, but I will show you around his entire website. So fattyuniversity.com. Yeah, okay, so this is it. It's still up. I was actually surprised that it was still up. I thought it would be taken down. The video is private now, so he, I mean, he made a video talking about the coin. Uh, he has his four links, he has Telegram. I don't know what this pill is supposed to mean. Telegram, there's nothing really here. I mean, you can view this in Telegram. It's not really anything. This is just a nothing burger here. Like there's nothing, I guess. 380 subscribers, one photo. He has a Twitter. This is Fatty Coin, 626 followers, one following, following himself. It's just him reposting a bunch of stuff. I don't think he has, does he have a single like, did he say anything? Oh no, he did. The one who states his case first seems right until the other one comes examines him. Seems like a follower of Jesus would want to seek out the real truth. He's using religion to get people to buy into this coin. Okay, so there's this one. I'll show you this one real quick. This won't even load. Like this won't load at all. This is just a nothing burger right here. This is what I want to look at. I'm not like a crypto broker, but uh, it looks like this is not good. So you can see how the volume goes up a lot. It goes up to like, so the volume up here, it peaks at like 1.3 million and immediately dips down 
all the way to 4,000, right? And then it goes a little bit up and goes all the way down. And sometimes the volume would get so low as to getting to zero. So right here, it says the volume is zero. It looks like what they would call a rug pull. I'm not super surprised he did this. I mean, he he begs a lot for money. He's probably like, oh, I mean, I'm not making I'm not making that much money off of begging, so why not just promote an entire scam to scam my impressionable audience? The volume of the coin absolutely plummeted. This goes down all the way to the Marianas Trench. To be fair, whoever invested in this coin needs to be mentally evaluated. But like every influencer, they they have a lot of impressionable viewers. So there's bound to be a lot of them who trusted Boogie and actually took part in buying this coin. Boogie2988 had an incredible fall from grace from being one of the most respected influencers to being someone of the complete opposite. I hope Boogie learns from this, although I highly doubt it. Moral of the story, don't invest in crypto and don't sympathize for victimizers. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you in the next one. Peace.